chauffeurs who drive around rich people. What are some of the weird shocking conversations you have overheard? About 25 years ago I had a summer job at a very Tony country club. Six figure joining fee, five figure continuing membership dues and that got you nothing but the privilege of paying top dollar for rounds, food, etc. I was a porter some of the time as we had cottages on club grounds for members to stay and make a weekend of it. One of my duties was driving members to and from airports usually private airports for private jets. One time I am driving two guys to the airport and one of them starts complaining. Seems he and his wife are always fighting over who gets the jet every weekend and where they want to go well the other one replied my third jet is actually just gathering dust right now since my son went to college wanna take it off my hands they shook on it right there in the van i once worked with a guy that was a utility worker but also a trained pilot he was getting ready to retire from utility work and had been offered a job by a company that basically repos private planes for the bank when the payments are too far behind he said he considered it but decided that a job repoing 30 minutes million dollar planes was maybe not the safest job for someone his age. I never knew before that conversation that such an industry existed. I've had multiple people pay me handsomely to let them smoke weed in the car. Heard a French guy yelling at his wife that 10,000 was too much to pay for two bracelets that she bought. Also overheard a lot business deals with absurd amount of money referenced, like tens of millions. Not sure if I qualify, but I did drive Uber Black for a while in NYC. Had a few interesting situations. One time I was driving a young woman and right before the destination she screamed for me to pull over. When I asked her what was wrong she pointed to the couple that was kissing in front of the building. Apparently the man was her fiancé. She didn't get out. She didn't cry. But she did ask if I could take her back to where I picked her up. I'll never forget her face. It was the saddest face I have ever seen in person. Another time I was picking up a group of guys outside a club early in the morning and as the first guy stumbled in a glock fell out of his coat pocket we just locked eyes and i said hope that's not for me laughing i was nervous and didn't really know what to do say Probably my favorite was picking up two college-aged girls from what I can only assume was a party. They were very drunk, and the second girl was basically completely gone. They were going all the way to Ridgewood, which was almost an hour. Girl A was pretty talkative and funny. Girl B looked to be completely passed out sleeping and didn't move the whole trip. We made it to Ridgewood, and girl B sits up suddenly, looks around, opens the door, and vomits everywhere. She seemed fine after that, but I just kept thanking her for making it the whole way and not throwing up all over my car. Drove L I M O at Marquette University during undergrad and grad school. Some of the students that went there were obscenely wealthy. Limos are the vans that drive drunk students anywhere on campus and a few blocks outside of campus. Couple things I remember randomly from it. One drunk guy leaves his wallet on a van and another driver calls it in so me and another supervisor can take it to campus police. We pick up the wallet from the driver and open it to get the student ID so they know who to email. There had to be a few grand in there and when we call the kid to tell him about it he told us we could just keep it because it was too far from his dorm to bother picking up k2 i picked up a couple girls from akio and they spent the entire ride talking about how it was ridiculous that one of the girl's parents planned on making her pay for her own apartment after graduation and there was nothing even livable under 2k a month this school is in milwaukee Wisconsin. Three Mardi Gras is the name of a campus ministry trip where you use your spring break to build houses and drink in somewhere that doesn't get snow in April. One of the people on my van was getting a free night of drinks from his buddies because he paid for everyone's trips. I think it was like 1500 per person if I remember correctly. Four rich kids are rich but foreign rich kids are usually on a different level. Was talking to a guy from Spain who said his dad did something with movies over there. I don't know. He had an actual Rolex on and ended the conversation with so anyways do you know where to find any man five that is a free service and a frat star tried to pay me for the ride with a ziploc baggie of cocaine i said no and he called me a legend and left a 20 in the cup holder before i realized it not a driver, but I used to caddy at a fairly exclusive country club in Massachusetts. It's the kind of place where, no matter how rich you are, you can't buy a membership. You're either born into it or you marry a member. As a result, a lot of the members like to show off their influence by inviting guests who would otherwise be unable to play at the club. Someone invited Mitt Romney. We were given a heads up that the governor he wasn't a senator yet would be coming and they wanted us to know how to act around him. We were told he wanted to be treated like anyone else but they didn't want us to gawk. So, I guess to make sure us dumb caddies weren't gawking, we were instructed to not look at or acknowledge the governor. 
because this is precisely how we would treat other people. I did get to shake his hand and chat a little bit. He was friendly, personable, way nicer than a lot of the members. I still don't like a lot of his politics but he seemed nice enough in person. Not a chauffeur, but seemed like a good chance to remind people of the story of John Boner at the time. Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, third in line for the U.S. presidency not knowing how to use either. As the story goes, one of his aides downloaded the app onto his phone and showed him how to use it. Unknown to him, he'd been stuck on the carpooling option, Uberpool. That's what he used for years. There are all sorts of tales of commuters hopping into their carpool and bam, there's John Boner stuck in a middle seat asking to get dropped off at the Capitol building. Building. However you feel about his politics, I think that's pretty funny. I had a college friend whose parents were friends of Elmo Zumwalt Link who told them a story about himself. Shortly after he was appointed chief of naval operations, he went out for a jog on a foggy morning when he was new to the DC area, got lost, and had to hail a cab to get a ride home. The cab driver was friendly and struck up a conversation that went something like this. Driver so you got lost. What do you do for a living? Zumwalt I am in the Navy. Driver I was in the Navy. Navy too. What do you do in the Navy? Zumwalt I. Emergency room. Run it. Driver shakes hand. I was driving as Uber and I picked up two businessmen in an industrial park. They were building developers. The man who was clearly the boss spoke to me as if I were a man and I was always the driver who picked him up. Although they were clearly from the Middle East, they chose to speak English. Maybe they thought it was rude not to being in the US, but if that would have been rude I'm not sure what the rest of the conversation was. They spoke about the future of business as if they were all so futile and how everyone will be either very wealthy, like them, or very poor, and how their children really won't be able to get jobs either but also will need to. I logged more than 4,000 rides between 2015 and 2017 and that was one of the weirdest. The other weirdest guy I picked up from a dispensary. He was really good looking, very well dressed and clearly well to do. But he was in some kind of mental distress. He wanted to visit more dispensaries but had clearly already bought the max. I got his hotel information through conversation and went there instead. On the way, he told me in all seriousness all about how his father was gone, which meant he was Jesus. Didn't you notice how much brighter the sun became when I got in your car? He was serious. He also followed guns and roses like they were the Grateful Dead. He thought Axel Rose was the smartest man alive. He didn't really notice when we got to his hotel instead of the dispensary. I did ask him if he had taken any other drugs that day and he insisted he hadn't. That was also one of the weirdest not a chauffeur and i was a participant in this conversation i used to tutor an oligarch's daughter in rubletka the wealthy suburb outside moscow one day she mentioned that she likes to ski i asked her which kind of skiing she preferred downhill is more popular where i am from but cross country is quite popular in russia is even part of some schools curricula her answer my favorite kind of skiing is the type where you jump out of a helicopter silly me i forgot about that kind I used to drive limousine and taxi. One time I got the manager of a fairly famous Canadian band in my car asking me where to buy coke. I had no idea where and I told him that. So his bright idea was to find a prostitute, hire her and ask her. I told him I couldn't help him pick up prostitutes either. He was disappointed but understood. He had me drive down a well-known street until he saw a prostitute. He asked me to pull over, got out of the taxi, paid the fare, and then immediately flagged me down again as a new ride. I knew what was up, but whatever. He gets back into the car with the prostitute and she tells him exactly what house to go to for some coke. I take them there and wait a bit. They come back out and I drive them back to the venue. Then he offers me two free tickets to the show which I gladly accepted as love at band and had seen them three times. Alas, since I was still working during the show, I gave them away to two friends who had never seen the band. They had a good time and I had a fun story to share with them about how I scored those tickets. Not really a shocking conversation and hardly a famous person, but it was interesting how easily and full of trust people can be about searching out and buying drugs in a strange city. For the record, this was 2003. Not a chauffeur. A small part of my family was Chicago Mafia. Grandpa told me a story of a family wedding in Chicago they went to in the late 60s. They were picked up at the airport by a limo with some high-ranking family members. On the way to the hotel they were stopped about eight times by various police officers. The officer would walk up to the driver's window. The chauffeur would reach into a money bag and pass a bill to the officer. Nothing would be said and they'd take off again. Eventually my grandpa asked if they were being bribed. His cousin Mafia laughed and said, no it's Thursday, that's when we pay our boys.
so I guess that's how they did it. Looks like a traffic stop and in the open where it's not unexpected. So I'd imagine that chauffeur had seen some things. My sister was in a limo once and asked the driver about his most interesting ride. The driver said that he picked up some models who were going to a pet demonstration. I'd rather be there than in fur or whatever it was. He got to the location. They stripped naked in the back of limo and he waited until they were done with the photo OP. Not a chauffeur but I work in high-end real estate so I am in the homes of the affluent a lot. Once I was in a home selling for over 10 million with two Bentleys in the garage. I overhear the homeowner talking to her friend in the next room. These new tax laws are killing us in the middle class. We had to open another trust just to save more money this year and saying that this woman really believes that she's the middle class. Another time in another multi-million dollar house. The homeowner said to me the billionaires are pricing us millionaires out of the neighborhood she referring to a gated community in Park City. One of my best friends used to drive Uber in a wealthy area of LA. He told me so many stories about drunk celebs and tight talkers in his car. Someone offered him a bag of weed because they felt sorry for their friend throwing up in the back seat. Most people were just normal though. Some highlights. Quentin Tarantino and Trisha Paytas were making out in his back seat when they were secretly dating LOL. Mike Tyson is apparently very nice in person and also a giant pothead. Somebody on Gossip Girl and her friend were arguing about chicken nuggets and tried to get him to go through a Wendy's drive through during the lunch rush when there were 10 cars already in line. Addison Ray or one of her friends took their shoes off and left them in the car. Leo DiCaprio took more than 5 minutes to find the car. He seemed out of it and was quietly bobbing his head listening to music on his headphones. I will also vouch for Mike Tyson. I met him and I kept the topic on his pigeons and his acting career and his plans for the future and he treated me like the nicest person alive. I am not saying he didn't do horrible things in his past, but be nice to him and be very respectful respectful and he's a very very nice person. I knew kids who met him several times and they were like, he's so nice, he's just like a big kid. The thing is, he is like a big kid if you get my meaning. He shared a stock I should invest in. Tell Duck. He told me his wife doesn't have sex with him anymore. She was in the back seat. Their rich friends pooped shellfish in the back seat. He hires Anthony Bourdain's Rip Food Scout to travel the world and try interesting dishes. No matter the price. 10,000 US dollars for a roll of sushi. Done it. I drove Uber part-time on sat nights. I would start the app directly in front of one bar in Hoboken. That was a bar that the Fox News people go to so long rides. Meet on air and behind the scene talent. One night was bring back on of the on-air talent. A woman. And no I won't say which. There were three guys with her on the ride. After I dropped her off at her home the three guys basically came to the conclusion that three Albanian licks were not being invited in and also that they were drunk and she had been the one who set the destination. They ended up hailing an Uber which was mine and I drove them home. So there you go. At least one woman who was on the air at Fox News basically convinced three men that there would be a gangbang and decided that there would not be. Not laughing was one of the hardest things I have done in my life. I was a Uber driver in Boston for a while. I had accepted a pool trip near Southie and picked up my first passenger, a Spanish-speaking woman with broken English. My next stop was Attic Bus Barn. I've picked up bus drivers before and that's where the pickup location showed on my app. Upon arriving, I waited for a minute or so and got a call. It was the woman I was supposed to pick up. Where are you? Why are you stopped and not here where I am? I asked what her location was and she screamed something about being across from a Starbucks. So I googled the nearest Starbucks and drove there. I was already close. I stopped directly across from the Starbucks and saw no one. So I called her. Lady where are you? Me I am across from the Starbucks. I don't see you. Lady I am right ducking there. Where are you? Me miss I think you need to find another driver. And I cancelled her trip. All of a sudden, from the sidewalk bus waiting shelter, emerges this angry woman screaming and shouting I am right here, I am right ducking here, I take off and book it, running a red light to boot, it was like 3am, the Spanish lady in the back said I am very H happy she didn't make it inside, I laughed and the trip finished peacefully. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.